Good morning to all of you. Today's topic is Jesus and the New Covenant. Jesus and the New Covenant. The passage that I will be reading is Hebrews chapter 7, verse 22 to 28. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 22 to 28. Let me read from 22. This makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need for those high priests to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did this once for all, when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men in their weaknesses as high priests, but the word of the oath which he came, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now there are some thoughts. Today I'm trying to go basic, and there are some thoughts that we might be asking, or many of you may have already gone past this stage and you probably will be a teacher to many. The some thoughts are, what is the old covenant? And what is the new covenant? Since Jesus talks about uh, a better covenant to come, why is there a need to change the Old Testament priesthood? Why is there a need for a new covenant? What is the New Testament priesthood? So these are some of the thoughts that we will be thinking today. Let's look at the Old Co Covenant. The Old Covenant started with Moses. Of course, when you go back to the scripture, there is Adam, that God has started with Adam, and then there is Abraham, there is Isaac, there is Jacob. But it's actually in Moses the covenant began. God may have made promises with Adam, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but in Moses the whole covenant began. And the covenant covenant that is where the establishment of the priesthood, establishment of the the Ark of the Covenant, and all this began at the time of Moses. Why so? Because human sin and fall short of the glory of God. And human need redemption. Earlier on, before Moses, like Abraham, Adam, and Isaac, and Jacob, God looked at their heart, their conscience, and how they relate with God. But then, during Moses' time, the number of people had grew in millions. And so God needs a system to help the millions of people who may not be able to go come close to God. So a priesthood was started. So the priesthood was started mainly is to act between God and man. The priest is in the middle. It's like a bridge. You know, man sin. So need to confess sins and they have to bring the animal sacrifice and the priest will do it and bring it before God. So priesthood started during Moses' time. So there are many priests because every one of them, after certain years of ministry and their age have come up, they die. And a new, new priest comes in and keep replenishing. They need a lot of replacement, a lot of replacement. And the priest's job is to offer sacrifices daily and annually for themselves and also offer sacrifices daily and annually for others. Whoever brings the sacrifice to the priest, 
he, he, they will do the sacrifice on behalf uh, for the people and for God. So they are bringing the sacrifice to God and on behalf of the people. So that's the Old Covenant. The Old Covenant really started with Moses who began, uh, God wanted a system for the whole nation. He began to have a nation so that everybody will know how to come back to God and be cleansed and forgiven. Then what is the New Covenant? The New Covenant starts with Jesus, God's only Son. And the Bible tells us that God so loved the world, so loved humankind. So God's salvation plan began. His salvation plan began long time, but the execution of it is during Jesus. So Jesus was sent from heaven to become man. So Jesus from heaven became human, and then he lived in a, as a human and died on the cross. On the cross, he paid the penalty of sin and redeemed mankind. So on the cross, he did all that to, you know, to pay for the sin of man and to cancel the guilt and cancel the sin and set human free. So the penalty of sin is been paid and people have been set free. It's just like when I go, uh, I, am, I committed a crime and I need to, you know, the, the judge uh, pronounced that I'm guilty and I need to pay a fine or I need to go to jail. So someone come and pay for my fine so I don't need to go to jail, I'm free. So same system is like a law, in the law court is the same thing. I'm free and redeemed but because my penalty of sin has been paid. So Jesus himself died on the cross. He did all those things. Then he rose again. And the Bible tells us that he ascended to heaven and he will come back again. That's a new covenant. It started with Jesus. When God sent his only son down to earth from heaven and become a human being to die for human. Now Jesus this and the new covenant, this new covenant that it started with Jesus and it doesn't have to pass on to anybody else. Why? Because Jesus is the only one, the Bible says, just like Hebrew says, he's the only one who's perfect, innocent and without sin and he lives forever. So he offered himself as a sacrifice once for all. Last time they had the, the priest and the high priest had to bring the animal and sacrifice it for God instead of they themselves. They are the one who sin, so they should be paid it, but they use the animal sacrifice to replace them. But now Jesus took away our sin is because he became a human, so he without sin, but he died for us as a, to take our place. So he didn't use animal, he used himself. Of course, the famous story, uh, we all know that there was one day, there was these uh, two brothers, uh, twin brothers, one become good and one did bad. And the guy who did bad, you know, murdered someone. And so he ran home. So the police are going after him. He ran home. He asked the other brother, who is a good guy, you know, he says, you help me, you, we exchange place. So he took out his bloodstained clothes and the other brother, worried and so then the police come police will definitely catch the good brother because he had the blood stained clothes the other guy don't have and they look the same so when when they go to trial so you whatever how he proved this is the blood stain so this guy died on his place in the same jesus the same thing died on our place one who did not make the mistake did not sin but died on our place so he he can save all the people who draw close, the Bible says, whoever draw themselves close to God and believe Him, and He can save them. And He always, he always, always makes intercession for His people. That is how Hebrews 7 says. Yeah. He makes intercession for His people all the time. Jesus is praying for us all the time. 
Now we go back to a little bit of the Old Testament. He says, who can be saved in the Old Testament? During the Old Covenant, who can be saved? Now we ask the question, why we need to change to a New Covenant? Those early days, anyone who brought a sacrifice to God, the rich one will bring, the rich person will bring a cattle or a goat or a lamb. And the poor will bring turtle dove or pigeon. And the very poor will bring cereal or fruits. So, those who bring their sacrifice to God, is they are themselves supposed to be punished, but now they bring the sacrifice, you know, it's like the sin transferred to the sacrifice, and God looked at that. So there was a picture in the Old Testament that whoever comes to God and we bring the sacrifice and confess the sin, God will forgive him. First, they did it for themselves daily, they call burnt offering. Mm -hmm. And secondly, they did it annually, and they do it every once a year, they call it on the Day of Atonement, they call it Atonement Offering. And when they sin any time, they will bring a sin offering. So you can be a daily offering means they keep themselves daily, uh, or yearly offering means once a year, it, it had to be done for everyone, and they themselves, and for the whole household, and also when they sin, whoever sin, we have sin offering. So the Old Testament, people who want to go back to God and to be saved are the ones who believe God and bring a sacrifice. Instead of God punish them, He punish the animal. The animal must die. So in the New Testament, how can we be saved? Anyone who can be saved in the New Testament? So in the New Testament, anyone, the Bible says, anyone who believes and accepts Jesus Christ into his heart. So if we believe and accept Jesus into the heart, then this will be this person will be saved. It's like you come to God in front of God. No. The New Testament you don't need any sacrifice because Jesus had done it. Jesus had cancelled it. So now you just have to believe and accept this Jesus. You as you accept Jesus, you know, is the one who has taken away your sin. So your sins have been cleansed and forgiven. Once and for all, Jesus has done. So the whole world for the past, for the present, for the future, is all done. Now, what you have done, but you just have to receive it. If you don't receive it, you still don't get it. Just like, you know, a mother has cooked food for every day, from breakfast and lunch and dinner, every day. But you don't get it because you don't receive it. You receive it, then you will, you will be filled. So, then whoever become believe in Jesus, who, he has he been saved, it is called he becomes a child of God. I mean he is now a child of God. He belongs to heaven. He is a co heirs with Jesus. So Jesus is God's uh, successor or heir, but then in the sense that we are co heirs, we are together with Jesus, joint heirs to him. So and then we will be receiving God's blessing, peace, joy, and protection. Anyone, he will receive God's blessing, peace, joy, protection, and many things. Because you belong to God, and God looks after you. He was sanctified and saved. Now this is the... On that day when Jesus, when we believe in Jesus, Jesus cancelled our sin. So he said he was sanctified and saved. He was cleansed, made holy, set apart, and saved. But now, every day, we have been sanctified and saved. It's just like the Old Testament. Every day, they bring their burnt offerings. Every day, we need to renew. We need to renew and be sanctified and saved every day. Until that last day when we meet God, and we are still progressing to be more like Jesus, more mature, more perfect. Until that last day, He, we, he will be completely sanctified and safe. So by the time, so he was sanctified and safe, he's been sanctified and safe, he will completely be sanctified and safe. So that's the way. What happened? All our sins have been taken. Then what if we confess, if we com um, commit sins now? If we commit sins now, he says, 
you can confess the sins to God anytime, all the time you can confess the sins to God and God will forgive you. So the forgiveness will come now. We keep forget confessing sins to Him. So that's in New Testament. So now, what is the new covenant now? What is the new covenant? What what is this new covenant? The new covenant is that God has been telling us that Jesus is that new covenant. He has done it once for all. Once, for all. once he did, did it. So he doesn't have to do it again and again and again and again. You just wait, look for Jesus once on it. Just so like when you when you go, uh, you you uh, the court found you guilty and you need to pay a penalty. You know, you pay come for the pay once only you pay. If ten thousand he gave once ten thousand and they said you, you don't have to keep paying. It is not an installment, it's just once. And the new covenant says that Jesus became the high priest. So he stands in between God and man. And Jesus is also the sacrificial lamb. He is not only the high priest, he is the lamb, he himself is the lamb. He offered himself. And Jesus is also the Son of God. So the Son of God become the sin offering. And Jesus is the great intercessor. Now, now he rose again. He goes back to God. He goes through all these things. He keeps praying for every one of us, praying, interceding for us. Jesus is God's promise. You know, he, he's God's promise says that be through him, you need to come through him. He is oh, the the way, the truth, and the life. You know, you need to him, only to him, no, no other way. Jesus is the guarantor. That means you follow him, he, he guarantees everything. You know, you, you don't need, you know, if you, just like when you buy a, a TV, you know, there is a warranty card, any breakdown, they warranty to you. But he guarantor, guaranteed anything breakdown, he will repair it and make it good. Every breakdown. So every sin that we have, he make it good, he make it good, he make it good, and just come back to him, he make it good. And Jesus is the new covenant. This new covenant is actually all rested on Jesus and Jesus. You look at him, he is the new covenant. That's why you need this new covenant. The old covenant is just showing that something is coming. But you just do something to replace it. But Jesus is the one who replaced for us. So today, when we look at Jesus, so what is it to us? So to us is that when you look at all other people, all other religion, and all others, and they are still using uh, intermediary sacrifice. They're using something to represent them. But Jesus said no need. You can come straight to God because Jesus can cleanse all the things. No need in the Middle East sacrifice. You come straight to God. You come straight to Him. So because He is the covenant, you walk to Him and that's the new covenant. Many other religions will still need something, an animal or a thing or something in between to represent. You need you know, a priest to represent. No, no need. Now the new covenant, new New Testament, we don't need the Old Testament priesthood anymore to go in between. No more. Jesus said, "You come straight to me." So now the New Testament is called priesthood of all believers. Everybody can go straight into Jesus. Priesthood of all believers. So all believers are priests now. Go to God. So we need guidance only. We need teaching, teaching us to go right to Him. So Jesus is the new covenant. So that's where God has given us to ask us to the scripture, the read, the read, the Bible to read. And we have the Bible. We read the Bible. That is all written there. And we need guidance to read the Bible. And we need now we can come to Jesus straight away. That means you you pray. It's not that you know you need another person to pray for you. And yes, another person can support you in prayer, can support you, but you you can you can directly pray to God. You can directly go to God, directly. So, and then you we can we can come to God, to His presence, anytime. When we sin, we confess our sins. Go back to Him. Anytime we can return. Any any people who drop out, 
can return. Any people who are cold can return. We always go back and God is like the prodigal son's father, always waiting for the son to come back. We are made sons of God, children of God. So he's waiting for us to return to him. So Jesus, the new covenant means Jesus become break down the barrier in the middle. No need any in the bridge in the middle, you cross straight to him. You come to him, you always can pray to him, you always can ask him, you always can seek him, you always can be in his presence, you always can go there. So today we don't need any intermediary, we don't need any sacrifices, we are in the middle. But a lot of time we make a mistake, we fail to understand. We still need someone in the middle to pray for us. We need someone in the middle to do things for us. We need someone to, to help us to get to God. No, no, no. Jesus said, I'm there. I'm there everywhere. I'm yesterday, today and forever. I'm here. I'm there everywhere. I'm all powerful. I'm everywhere. And I'm, I know everything. You just come to me. Come to Jesus. You say, I cannot see Jesus. Never mind. Jesus said, my Holy Spirit is there. Relate with Him. Relate with Jesus anytime, any moment. There is no place you cannot pray to God. There is no time you cannot... God is not there for you to seek. No such thing. God is always there for you. So Jesus is the new covenant. The old has gone. We now need to be Jesus only. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Come upon us. Let us understand. Actually, Jesus, you yourself have done everything. You are God's Son. You come down from heaven and you understand our dilemma, our difficulty, the penalty of sin. You know it is costly. So you come down, you walk this journey as human being and you die on the cross or obediently you pay our penalty and humankind need to to pay the price and you become a human you pay that price thank you lord for receiving him and he died on the cross but he is god he rose again so he overcome death and now we believe in him you know jesus is the one who has done only need only to do once for all once for the past, for the present, and for the future. And He has cleansed us, He has sanctified us, and He has saved us, He has redeemed us. So we, there is no barrier for us with God now. We can go straight to God. We can go straight to Jesus. We can pray to Him at any hour, pray to Him at any time, talk to Him anywhere. We can understand His word all the time in the Bible, through the Bible. Help us, Lord, to make effort to do that. Help us not to waste this time. Help us not to have excuses, but always come back to you. Thank you, Lord. Bless us. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.